button. Um, it seems like we are live. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome Morning. to our <laughs> webinar. Um, maybe we start with this impressive video. Um, I think it's it's a little bit like the Hollywood studios, but this time on a date where a German was launched uh to the airspace <laughs> on on his way we we have another video from um our dear guests today and i think you are taking us to the even taking off <laughs> this is um just an overview of for uh, millions of people day can you hear the day. sound guys yeah okay, okay. for production and supply now and tomorrow for the protection and safety of the environment people and machinery this is what we are there for this is six sensor intelligence it's okay. okay wow yeah and with this um very short but very impressive video and introduction allow me to welcome our dear guests again uh, th this time we are in the south of germany <laughs> i think when 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 we had the session with knf uh, it's not very far away from where you guys are located <laughs> so yeah um welcome sri and felix uh, to our webinar and we are very happy to to have you here and um i would like first of all to give you the chance to to give you a short introduction. Yes, thank you, Jörg. Thank you for your kind introduction and welcome everyone to our today's webinar uh, in course of the AGT webinar series. My name is Felix and have fun today listening to what we have to tell to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jörg. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity. Um, this is Shri from um, SIG. Um, together with Felix, we're going to have fun, hopefully. <laughs> but, um, I, I, I'm really a fan of your uh, initiative uh, to have an informal talk with the community and the industry. I think that's a good initiative on your side. So, really yeah, th thank you so much. And um, I mean, in the preparation, we've been kidding a little bit, <laughs> but uh, finally, you guys reached, or we together reached uh, 600 participants who signed up which is um, really impressive and i mean i'm 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 very happy and proud to have you guys from sick here on board because um yeah let me say you i, I was missing you in my collection <laughs> <laughs> after abb siemens and Bea, we already had very big names and um yeah it, it's just great to have you here with your experience and your background i think for our audience that will be uh, something very interesting so, Jemsen, I didn't forget about you. Uh, so far away. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, very good afternoon at 3 p.m. from Singapore. Thank you for having me. Yo, thank you so much. Oh, what means thank you for, for, for having you. I mean, <laughs> we started this together, Jemsen. So. <laughs> um, but, but that's kind of funny for you, right? Uh, there, there's a special relation to SIG you have, isn't it, Jemsen? Yeah, <laughs> I was a sick member so, uh, many years back. <laughs> okay, how many years is that back? Uh, it was the very beginning when the sick started in Singapore. Yeah, uh, during the uh, Klaus Schmidt, you know, if you know the name of Ben Hotzer and uh, Mr. Herner, these are mm -hmm. the guys that we worked together. That was, I, I left sick 10 years ago. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah. yeah, so it's a special webinar for you today, then as well, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, let me not, not forget to welcome everyone. Um, I think it's always great to have some comments when you can leave some comments here um, to see the, the community. I mean, uh, we know that many people are not able to attend uh, the event live, but they will look it later and i think it's just a great sign for everyone um to see who is on board and from where uh, someone is on board okay um already four minutes gone um i have to make sure with this big program um and uh, thank you again uh, uh, dear guests for for your great preparation 
Um, I think you, you will let us know in which special environment you'll be sitting. But allow us shortly to, to give uh, an introduction um, to what we are planning to do today. Jemsen, um, if you could be so kind and uh, go to the next slide so that uh, we have uh, the outlook for our program um, for the rest of the year. I'm a little bit shocked, so to say. I mean, it's only six weeks left. And um, so that's the reason we have uh, another three webinars left. Uh, so there will be NBAND already next week. These are the guys who are powering our heated sample lines, uh, the real experts in the manufacturing of uh, heating cables. Then we have the company Schramm, where we talk about enclosures, um, an enclosure may be similar to the enclosure or the environment our uh, sick guests are sitting at the moment. <laughs> and then uh, we have gas made, um, so that will be kind of the, the final. But Jensen, I picked up your idea. Maybe we have a small meet the expert Christmas party. Just a small <laughs> get together. I mean, uh, we, we, we gathered so many great people um, uh, over this year, and uh, maybe I can, we can arrange this. Uh, yeah. let's, let's see. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Also, this time, first time, we try to stream it not just on LinkedIn, but also in YouTube, um, because sometimes we get some feedbacks that, depending on the numbers of live viewers, there might be some technical issues, and we are even also interested um, yeah, to um, make these videos available also for people who are not at LinkedIn. So um, this will be an upcoming additional service, so to say, um, so that everyone has the chance to see it. But um, you will find this video, I'm pretty sure Felix, uh, as a, a real social media expert in SIG, will make this video also available on the SIG channel. So, um, yeah, uh, if, if you missed it, don't worry, no problem. So, last agenda for today. Um, yeah, first of all, the, the expert introduction, the short expert introduction um, has, has already been happening. Um, but I think it's very interesting to understand the company SIG. Where does it come from? Uh, what is their solution portfolio? Be because I think the, the numbers of solution they have is quite impressive. And um, I think uh, we will get a good overview of um, the uh, system solutions, uh, because that's actually the location where this stream from uh, our colleagues there comes from. So allow me to hand over the mic <laughs> to Sri and uh, Felix. Um, so, guys, if you can share your presentation, um, yes. then I have the chance, because I think you're starting with a presentation now, right? Exactly. Absolutely right. We've prepared a couple of slides. Yeah. So, I hope you can see the screen. We do. Perfect. So, um, welcome, everyone, one more time to our today's presentation on system solutions for continuous emission monitoring and process gas analysis. We are very happy to be here and to present our solutions in course of your webinar. Um, we are... Next slide. Exactly. Yeah. So my name is Felix. Um, I'm the Technical Industry Manager for Infrastructure Industries within SIG. In this um, position, I'm responsible for our global business uh, development in the infrastructure industries. And in this uh, case, I'm focusing on the cement uh, application uh, helping our um, cement customers worldwide to find efficient solutions for process optimization and also to comply with emission and regulatory standards. So, the, Felix, that's that, that's funny. First of all, you said in your introduction you are the LinkedIn guy. <laughs> Something I really liked. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they often call me the LinkedIn guy. You're absolutely yeah. right. So, feel free to follow. <laughs> on, you know, on LinkedIn, and I'm very happy to share more information. No, just, maybe, maybe just for the audience, we've been kidding about that because, um, yeah, Felix really is uh, with more than 17,000 followers. Uh, um, yeah, I would say a big, big influencer. But um, coming back to, to your topic, Felix, I think especially from, from the sample handling, cement industry is probably one of the most 
yeah, challenging industries you could choose. How, how, why? Absolutely, yeah. And we prepared one slide regarding this. So um, just wait a couple of more minutes and we'll talk okay. about the challenges in sample handling and sample conditioning a little bit more into detail in, in two to three minutes. Sure, yeah, great. Yeah. So, right. yeah, so my name is um, Sri Patan Sri Raman. Uh, you can call me Sri. I'm the responsible product manager for our um, system, solu system solutions within the SIG product portfolio. Um, I've been with SIG for the last four years. And uh, in the capacity, I, I originally come from the oil and gas background. And uh, now I'm more involved into the SEMS and process gas analysis um, solutions. So, um, yeah, I think we, we are quite excited to, to share with you our um, system solutions um, for these markets. So I think we can quickly jump into yeah. it. So okay, SIG, yeah. is, SIG is worldwide one of the leading manufacturers of sensors and sensor solutions for industrial automation. Uh, with more than 10,000 employees and 50 subsidiaries worldwide, we are active in the fields of uh, factory, logistics, and process automation. And what we are in particular proud of is our huge product portfolio, portfolio comprising of more than 40,000 products which are used in various different applications and also our high expenditure into research and development of more than 200 million euros annually. And this is making SIG one of the most innovative companies out there in the global sensor market. Wow. Okay. So most of the products, the gas analyzers for process and emission monitoring are being used in what we call the process automation world. So these are the cement plants, um, the chemical and petrochemical industries, maritime applications, mining, and also power. However, those gas analyzers can also be used in various other industrial fields. For example, in traffic, where we monitor the gas composition in road tunnels. Uh, gas analyzers can also be used for machine in the machine tool industry, where we are measuring, for example, the oxygen uh, for energization control. Um, electronics and solar is a big field for us, uh, where, for example, we measure the HF and HCL emissions in the semiconductor industry. And finally, there's also the automotive industry with the big painting booths, oh. with the big paint shops, where ZIG offers solution in order to measure the volatile organic carbon emissions from these paint shops in the automotive industries. So various different fields where you can find our gas analyzer solutions which we will talk about today. Um, as I mentioned previously, I'm responsible for the cement industry, and I would like to show you just one example where you can find our gas analyzers uh, taking a cement plant as an example. Uh, when talking about gas analysis, we always have to distinguish in two main parts. First of all, we have got the emission monitoring. You can see here at the right with the stack, um, here indicated with this orange a dot here we are talking about uh, monitoring flue gases with predefined accuracies and we always have to check for compliance with the local emission standards and meaning that uh, i would like to say that we are mostly handling here uh, more stricter and very low emission limit values and that certain uh, certification quality assurance and testing processes need to be put into place here uh, in order to uh, follow um, the, the, and to assure proper functionality of the measurement systems. And depending on the different regulations, uh, there are different components that need to be measured. You can see them here in the top right corner. And in addition to those gas compositions, also um, usually the dust concentration, the volume flow, temperature, pressure, has to be measured and everything has to be combined with data acquisition systems with SIG is also offering, which I will show you. Okay, okay, me. okay, okay, Felix. Wow, 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 wow. That was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot of <laughs> And that was just the emission monitoring part. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to say I something know. about process <laughs> gas as well. <laughs> I know, I know, but I think uh, it, it, it's fair, you know, to, to, to give it a short review and to give it a short recap, because um, what, what I really like about this slide is um, to show maybe the difference, but also the similarity we have um, in, in this. So um, SEMS um, is one of the aspects um, we are we are measuring there. That's that's what you said, right? And depending on, yeah, this is this is this part. Um, and um, depending on the region where you are in, um, 
because I mean uh, we have many viewers, for example, from from Asia, uh, and uh, there might be different, yeah, regulations um, in place which uh, require different type of measurements, and at the same time, I think it's also that there can be different limits, right? So that's I, I would expect quite a challenge for a company with a worldwide uh, supply uh, to um, yeah to, to, to have a view on all of these different standards, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's that's one of our key focus because we are catering not only to Europe, but also to the rest of the world. And we, we have um, uh, our subsidiaries in the region who have a good idea of the current regulations and also the future regulations. So this sort of right. feedback is always provided back to the headquarters and the, in the development teams uh, when they when, when there is a new product development for a for a new analyzer. We we always take into consideration all of this information with the changing regulations and also changing what sort of measurement components and most importantly how the industry in that region is performing. Um, for example, in Southeast Asia, you already mentioned that, that, that eventually there will be a phase out of coal means that we have to cater to that change in the future as well. So and, okay. and with, with SEMS, it, it, it is already quite an intensively um, focused uh, um, product within, with product within our product portfolio. And um, I'm, I'm pretty, um, I think we have some more slides where we can show you yeah. how, how, we, uh, how we handle that differences between SEMS and, and the process cast. So, so to, be, to be very extreme in, in, uh, uh, in this slide, I could say the, the only thing which is needed from a regulation point of view, from, from uh, the, the law requirements, um, probably only the SEMS would be needed, right? From a re regulation point of view, uh, you're absolutely right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think it's very interesting for the people also to understand because we we always say because it can also come uh, to different conditions and especially for the sample handling system, um, it uh, depends on where are you measuring. Yeah, where in the process are you measuring? You might find different. Uh, dust concentrations, different temperatures, and like uh, Jemson said in one of the last webinars, there's not uh, the only sample handling system, and uh, it's not just the only analyzer system. Uh, so I think that's very interesting for the people to to take away from this uh, uh, from this slide and uh, to have this great overview here. Yeah, and um, just let me add that uh, from a certification point of view. You are absolutely right. There's always a complete system which is certified. So the sample probe, the sample line, the, the sample conditioning, and the analyzer is seen as one system which has to be certified as once. So it's not like, uh, yeah, it's exactly like you said. It's not just the sample handling and the analyzer. You have to see the complete picture, everything as one product. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, but I, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Clement, I, uh, Felix, I um, stopped you from explaining all of the other measuring points. And I think that's very interesting uh, uh, to see what is the benefits and, and where are the points of measuring, just as an example here in this uh, cement uh, production overview. Exactly. So um, on the left side, all the blue dots, you can see the, the process applications. And the main goal of those process applications are to increase the product quality to increase the energy efficiency and, for example, also the completeness of combustion. And by doing so, we can assure that the system downtime and the maintenance is being reduced, but also the plant safety, for example, is increased by monitoring CO in the coal handling process or at the electrostatic precipitator in order to reduce smoldering fires or explosions. And the challenges in these process applications are not that we have to uh, follow regulatory requirements, but that they are usually we are uh, handling very harsh environments. For example, temperatures of up to 1,400 degrees at the kiln inlet, uh, dust wow. concentrations of up to two kilograms of cubic meter. And there are very <laughs> close atmospheres, uh, particle abrasion, and also very high gas concentrations. So very high sulfur concentrations up to, for example, 70,000 ppm. And of course, the, the sample probes, the, the uh, sample lines, and the analyzer system itself, they need to withstand those very harsh environments. Yeah. Felix, from, from your experience, or also three, from your experience, 
are the, the, the customers, the, the companies uh, willing to invest more in this process optimization? I mean, I could say that SEMP system, as soon as, as soon as you have a system which meets the requirement, you might be good, right? But um, do you see, um, especially when we talk um, uh, yeah, about the reduction of uh, emissions, when, when we talk about yeah, less resources in the production, and um, I, I don't know, maybe you have this figure, how much percentage uh, of, of emissions are related to the cement uh, industry, for example. I mean, it's a quite intense and, and a big industry. So um, do, do you see that there is uh, the, the companies are more investing into the, the optimization, especially? Absolutely. I mean, um, you, you already mentioned that the cement industry is responsible for 7% of all global CO2 emissions. So that's a huge number. Wow. And decarbonization is, of course, a big trend, which, uh, in fact, is influencing the cement industry a lot. Not only the cement industry, also waste incineration, power plants, the maritime industry, chemicals, all those uh, fossil fuel using industries are linked to decarbonization and um, uh, with hydrogen and carbon capture storage and utilization process optimization is of course one of the biggest um, measures in order to reduce those carbon emissions and we always say you cannot control what you don't measure so you need process gas analysis system to see exactly what's going on in the process how can I tweak the system to the highest efficiency, uh, how can I ensure complete combustion, how can I reduce unwanted downtime, how can I uh, increase my product quality, and this is something you can only achieve by ha having um, a system, a gas analyzer system with a high uh, availability like the ones we are offering. Yeah, okay, no, very, very nice, because I mean, we had this discussion in the webinars uh, before, Jameson, right, if you, if you w w want to remember, I mean, we always say, there has to be a worldwide system to measure the the emissions. That would mm -hmm. be the SEM system, so that there's a worldwide standard. If we agree to reduce, I mean, it has to be uh, a way that we can trust other countries. Uh, how do they measure? That's probably yeah. the first point. And second point is really the the optimization. And I think that's that's great to see, and it's great to have this thinking confirmed by by you experts there. Yeah. 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 So um, coming to the next slide, I just want to give you a short overview about our uh, product portfolio for emission monitoring and process gas analysis. And we can start with the hot, wet um, uh, measurement solutions, for example, the MCS 200 uh, HW and the MCS 100 FT and the Mercom 300Z, where the sample gas from the probe to the final analysis is always kept above the dew point at 200 degrees Celsius so we can make sure that there is no condensation happening inside the probe, the sample line and the analyzer. And the benefit here, of course, is that we are also able to measure water and the water soluble components since we are not coming below the dew point. Additionally, so that, the hot, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. additionally yeah. SIG offers also the so-called code dry extractive solutions. Here we are using gas coolers in order to cool down the sample gas coming from the heated sample line. And by doing so, we extract the water from the process gas. And by doing so, we are able to measure the gas composition in the dry gas, which is a little bit more easier than using the hot, uh, wet gas. Um, benefit here is that the system itself, it's not as, let's say, highly sophisticated like the hot wet measurement technology. However, in this case, you are unable to measure water and also the water soluble components since they are being usually extracted by uh, the means of the, the sample gas cooler. And then finally, uh, the third gas analyzer technology SIG is offering is so-called in situ measurement technology where the measurement is happening directly inside the process without any additional sample handling. And um, here, of course, the benefit is that you get a very fast reaction uh, of what's going on in the process. The, the measurement values are instantaneously available. However, the limitation here is mostly related to the limited numbers of um, gases which can be measured at the same time. And as I mentioned previously, for emission monitoring, it's not only about gas analysis. What we also need to know is the, uh, the, the dust concentration and also the volume flow of uh, gases going through the system in order to make the mass balance. So this is 
something which is completing the complete uh, product portfolio for emission monitoring. And finally, all the data come together in a data acquisition system in order to um, uh, make those reports, which need to be sent out to the authorities usually. And additionally, SIG offers some um, digital services, for example, remote service and condition monitoring in order to check always the vital sensor data of your analyzer system and to give you the possibility to achieve the maximum availability of the complete analyzer systems. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, Felix, I have to have to recap again for this understanding because I think it's quite, also this slide is pretty nice to have an overview, um, especially with the in situ measurements. I mean, as you can uh, imagine, uh, not just in our company, but uh, there are many discussions in the industry and they say, okay, one day we will only have in situ measurements and the in situ measurements because you have no delay, right? And if you compare um, uh, the sample handling system and then the analyzer um, uh, shelter or the analyzer itself um, uh, with the in situ, uh, there's always the idea that one day just plug it in and, uh, uh, and try to try to measure. Do you see this as a realistic scenario or what, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um. It's depending. Once again, we have to differentiate between process and emission monitoring systems. For right. emission monitoring, where we are, let's say, at the clean side, um, it could happen, definitely. For process yeah. monitoring, there uh, we have a lot of different um, points which need to be taken into consideration, um, gas concentrations, temperatures, uh, process uh, variations, uh, dust concentrations. It, here it's not that easy to offer plug and play solutions definitely not okay yeah it's just just interesting i mean jensen you also uh, uh, i think uh, you also made your so, some thoughts about this right yeah yeah we, we have we have also done a some brief uh, uh, differentiation <laughs> in our own <laughs> okay so Okay, yeah, but let's continue. Yeah, thanks. We'll go on. So SIG is like the one-stop shop sensor supplier for the complete emission monitoring and process gas uh, monitoring. And with these words, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Shri. Yeah, so speaking of uh, one-stop shop, the, the main idea behind the system solutions within the SIG product portfolio is to combine the existing um, offering uh, by SIG and combine it as a solution for specific applications. So in, with respect to the context of today, um, as you might already see, we are sitting in one such container. And, and it could be also said that we are mimicking the industrial environment because you might, I don't know if you, if you can hear me, but there's actually a bit of loud noise in the background. Uh, there's instrument amp being compressed and then there's a lot of people moving around. So we're literally in the production hall of SIG. Where we yeah, I, I will put you I will put you on, on solo layout three a little bit later, but maybe you can come a little bit closer to the microphone. Felix has more uh, <laughs> presence in terms of, so that we can clearly hear you. Uh, okay, is, 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 it, is it better Thanks. now? Yeah, yeah. Seems to be better, eh, Jameson, or? Yeah, I'm clear. Yeah. I can hear him very clear. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I, was, I was actually making the point that we are mimicking an industrial environment. So that's also one of the reasons why we probably could hear me properly, because I'm sitting much closer to the door where we are uh, in the production hall, uh, where we are building such um, system solutions. And um, if, you can, if you can see, this, this sort of looks like the, the, the picture on the, on the top left quadrant, um, where we are um, having um, basically three types of shelters, what we call as the um, C container, which is the a standard um, C container specification um, um, item which we use to assemble and integrate different analyzers. Uh, and since this already has CSC certification, this can be um, shipped easily, just like any other shipment container. So there's actually lower effort for, for shipment and, and uh, logistics aspects of uh, moving the, the, um, the, the scope of supply to the end user location. And, and, and the next two is, is pretty much um, in the same vein, but a little bit different. So we have the, what we call as the analyzer shelter, which is more like a customized um, shelter where, where this is not exactly um, like a shipment, shipment container specification, but more in the container where the, the idea behind is that this is a modular and customizable 
um, solution where we can uh, we integrate all the analyzers, every other aspect of sample conditioning, every other aspect of signal handling, power distribution, um, gas utilities like the gas bottle racks. Everything is integrated, tested, and shipped to site where we expect that the customer is only connecting their utilities at the tie-in points where um, everything is tested and everything already is like more, more or less like a plug and play aspect behind it. Um, where we have a dedicated space in the industrial environment that just space pretty much encapsulates all the analyzer measurement needs in that zone. And um, what we have as a third variant is the what we call as a special um, shelter. This is really the, the next level of complexity when it comes to requirements like earthquake uh, protection or fire extinguishing protection, uh, artex and, and we have these explosion proof uh, needs. So where we, we cater to specific requirements, this is more like an ad hoc uh, turnkey solution uh, where we uh, completely look and talk to the customer and, and understand their requirements and what they see as their um, specification for, for that application. And, and the fact that we, we are able to, to cater to that specific complex need uh, means that we are able to integrate the learnings across these projects and we try to make it as a repeatable solution where similar applications and similar requirements are required across the globe. So um, I'll, I'll, from two slides or three slides from now, we'll probably jump into a more uh, more intense experience of sharing. Yeah, hands-on, yeah. <laughs> hands-on uh, view of things, but typically this is how a typical container looks like. So we have right. an analyzer um, and we have space for a data acquisition system um, and also we have our what we call as an MPR for, for remote connection and, and this this one such container or two such containers what we have in is, is just one an example of different possibilities uh, out of all the combinations and combinations of what we try to cater to. So uh, so yeah so this is our what we call as the complete a, um, aspect in, in catering to such markets where we are um, splitting into four pillars, so to speak, where the shelters and special cabinets, which I shared with you right now. Um, I think we, we spoke quite in, in detail with, with respect to SEMS and uh, what, what's our product portfolio, with, especially with cold dry systems there, and also um, process uh, gas analysis as well, especially when we spoke about the kiln inlet measurement um, by the SAP 3000. And, and we there, there's several industries where this is also and, and the main idea here is system integration, right? So it's not just the analyzers, also the sample handling, um, which, which we'll speak and show in a while, and also data acquisition. So basically collecting all the data from these measurement devices and packing it in the right format, and, and which, for example, in the SEMS world, this is already reported to the regulatory authorities. And, and when we have a process world, then you're directly connecting it to a plant monitoring system. Um, okay, so 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 that that means um, you sit with your customer, you decide what component has to be measured. You can put from your portfolio together, and you can then system integrate this. So um, the customer would come over to your site, maybe have the the fabric acceptance testing, the FAT, and then, as you said, in in the perfect world, it's it's shipped to the location, it's uh, connected, plug and play, and uh, Wow. Okay, that's that's impressive to see. Yeah. The, the yeah. idea is that that we within within SIG we take care of the complete uh, project loop. So starting from pre-sales, um, where we have a dedicated team that that understands these customer requirements and and supports the sales process, and then eventually when it comes to our team here, we do the complete uh, integrated engineering, project management, uh, production, testing, and eventually the logistics aspect of it as well. And okay, so we wow. can consult the customer how what we think might be the best suitable solution for their needs. And in addition, if the customer already has something in mind, how the perfect solution might look like, if there is a specification, SIG is able to build exactly the, the shelters and the analyzer system according to the specification which were provided by the customer. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah Im impressive. Great. Thanks for this overview. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So this is how a typical um, system architecture looks like, where what we are talking about, especially in the aspect of uh, 
system integration uh, where we have um, the analyzers, for example, in this case, this is connected to a stack uh, where we are measuring uh, uh, process information from the stack. And we also have the in situ uh, measurement here. Um, uh, we also are looking at the aspect of where we are connecting and assembling all the signal data into our MAC 300 data acquisition system. Where you can see that with the system architecture and the network uh, differences with, with the Ethernet, TCP IP, uh, Modbus, different, all, all the possible protocols that can be necessary for every customer across the globe. And eventually also connecting it to their intranet with the interfaces with acceptable data um, security needs and eventually, if needed, also to cloud platform as well. So this overall encapsulates what we see as one complete system integrated solution for such an application. And this is repeatable. And also the fact that this can be a cross industry approach as well, where we are only trying to change little bit, little aspects of the solution to fit a, a different industry with a different requirement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I think it's, it's, it's probably a good time to, to jump into the hands-on uh, yeah. session in that case, which I will stop my sc um, screen share. Come in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I will... that's, that's great. Now we have you on solo screen. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So I think, I think it's a good idea to probably um, go to, we have, we have two containers where we can probably jump in and, and we have a more hands-on informal session outside the presentation. Cool, yeah. I think that's, so, that's, that's great to see it in life, in real world. So this is where some noise of the of the busy oh, workshop the comes end. from. Oh, let me make a show. <laughs> Thank um, you guys for making this happen. I always uh, appreciate uh, that it's, you know, it's, it's a hands-on and I think that's something that people have uh, really benefit from it. Oh, James, do you see it's a little bit frozen at the moment? Yeah, okay, I yeah. thought. Yeah. Now we're back. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Okay. So we are in a container. And, and as I mentioned uh, shortly, we have, it's, it's, it's been tested for a customer. And, and we have close to five hot wet analyzers, as you can see, maybe, maybe from that angle. You can see all five of them. So this is all integrated, pre-tested, and, and you can see these are all functioning and they're on. And we could probably have a look at one of the uh, screens. As you, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but the so for this for this container, this is measuring the measurement components that are shown here, NH3, CO, NO, CH4, NO2, uh, also water, uh, oxygen, NOx, and also CO2. And on top, you can see that we have the uh, um, temperature and pressure probe, uh, which you could probably see somewhere here. Ah, oh, it's not active. So maybe I can move back. Ambient pressure and flow, and there's another screen ah. where you can also see the temperature. Um, this is our hot wet uh, analyzer, what we call as the MCS 200 HW. Um, we could probably have a quick look at how it looks like to give you a feeling. Um, so we have, um, this is an integrated solution as well. So this is a system cabinet where we have uh, different components um, to handle the sample handling from the probe, uh, also from the instrument air supply and also for the calibration gas. And this, this specific analyzer has, um, so if you can see it down, uh, if you, can, you don't mind showing this yet. So this is the, um, uh, what do you call that, the in measurement cuvette, and this is the photometer and uh, where we are uh, bringing in the sample gas from the top and there's also exhaust outside, as you can see with the heated jackets. Yeah, I'm not right. sure you can completely see. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can see it. Yeah, we yeah. can see and, it. And yeah. this is also transferring all the data via the ethernet um, and we have also other solenoid valves for, for controlling the different components, different utilities that come in. Um, so this is, as you can see, five of these across five stacks. Oh. And these okay. are all we also can do it in a in a more redundant way we we we, we can also have we have a con containers where the analyzers on both sides of the of walls basically so um wow. this means that this is not only the analyzer aspect uh, if you can see here we also um 
custom needs for like air conditioning. Um, we also have in some spots um, uh, customized shelters where we have fire extinguishing systems, um, earthquake protection, and also other notification like for smoke detection and fire detection. So we, we integrate different measurement sensors um, to, to fit um, the needs. And as you can see here, um, we have uh, one uh, instrument dryer. I think it's a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think we can so see that's, it. That's huh? actually getting one connection from the customer and splitting it across all the five um, analyzers. And that's on the other side is this is the power distribution panel, uh, which provides all the power. This is all uh, pre-tested and, and integrated uh, fuses and, and bait safes around. And on, on the, this, this is more like a clean design because we have all the analyzers on this side, all the utility, right. all the cabling, uh, maybe you can point over there. You can see all the cabling is, is done, um, right. tested, loop tested, and signal tested. And this is all connecting to a DAHS, which probably sits in a control room at the customer side, right? And and everything is sort of pre-tested here. And we also work with third-party companies, for example, with the DHS as well, uh, where we do remote testing and and also remote maintenance from this location as well. So this okay, is so three uh, the the um, for example the display that only gives a short overview of the system, and later on we're going to see how we can access and get extract more data out of the out of the system, right? Exactly, exactly. So the idea okay. is. Um, this is more like an industrial environment to understand how it sure. looks like, how, how such a typical sure. shelter or a container looks like, um, to give you a feeling of all the wiring and everything that's, that's integrated here. But after this short hands-on, we will go into uh, the remote maintenance aspect behind it as well. So, right. um, yeah, probably we can go to the next shelter where we have the four dry systems. Oh, this is a smaller. This is a smaller container con compared to the other, right? Yes, this is a smaller container, um, and this has two cold dry analyzers, what we call as a power sense handler. This is our standard system um, for the okay. sense market, and this is completely um, certified system, as Felix mentioned, right from the sample probe to the analyzer. And uh, maybe we can show one of them. This is already open, so maybe I can just quickly show here. And you see that everything here is is integrated, um, and surprise, surprise, <laughs> AGT cooler. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you, Sri. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, so that's your two-stage cooler, and as you can see here, er everything is integrated um, right from the sample inlet um, with uh, the calibration valves, uh, solenoid valves for automatic calibration from the probe or at the shelter. We have two analyzers. This is our GMS 800, um, 8, mm -hmm. 811 actually, with um, a D4, um, D4 UNOR and OXOR, uh, OXOR for um, O2 and D4 for um, CO, sorry, NO, right? NO, NO2. NO, NO2, right. And yeah, so th that's, that's our standard okay. system. Um, I yeah, and, and I think it, it's pretty nice, uh, guys, and, and thank you for making this happen <laughs> to see our cooler here. And uh, may, maybe, Jensen, we can shortly uh, show um, uh, your um, cooler, w w which you have as, a, as an overview. Um, yeah. So, because I mean, this is the MAK10 cooler, and um, maybe we can really uh, use use this chance, gems. And I think the one you have um, is pretty well equipped. And the speciality about this cooler is that it can be set up as a complete conditioning system, meaning coming with a flow meter, um, uh, having a depth filter there, and um, yeah, um, like Sri said, it's a two-stage cooler. So. First of all, the requirements for these type of coolers is um, yeah, a reliable and a low uh, outlet dew point, three degrees C, for example. Um, and um, at the same time, uh, the washout rate. I mean, this is one of the big difference um, also between the hot, wet and the cold, dry system, like Felix mentioned in the introduction. All of the coolers uh, will have 
um, a loss of water because actually this is the main task for the cooler. So Jensen, if you can start your presentation again, I would just like to use the, 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 the chance, we are not stealing too much time, but um, to give an overview before we will see the latest innovations from SIG, I think um, it's also a good chance for us um, to give an overview about um, this, this cooler and the MAK-10. Um, because as you can see here, it's many different configuration possible. It's even possible when you have more than one gas path that uh, you can configure this up to four gas paths. And um, if you go to the next slide, Jemsen, um, I think this is also something I would like to show here because uh, we continued uh, obviously in the development um, the difference from the outside is a little bit hard to tell um, because it looks quite similar, um, but uh, the, the inside is a, in the inside. There is a big difference. Ooh, <laughs> not so easy to, to steer the camera in the right way. So this is the MAK-10 and here we have the MAK-20 and the main difference and um, the main development we've been doing here because all other options are available is the new heat exchanger design. Because the heat exchanger itself is responsible for the performance of the cooler. And as um, the, uh, the colleagues from SIG already mentioned, the requirements worldwide for lower detection limits continue. Um, that really means um, the, the washout and the optimization of this process has to continue and um, yeah therefore we are ha very happy um, that, that we made this development and as you can see here we managed really to have a strong reduction of the washout uh, rate um, but at the very end we also have to be honest um, a cooler will always wash out uh, components like SO2 but it's the perfect combination. I think uh, the, the, the SIG system proves that it's the perfect combination between washout and the handling of the washout inside the analyzer system so that there will be very reliable and uh, yeah, stable and, and, and good results, right? So um, yeah, thank you for, for, for uh, giving us the chance to, to present on this and um, to show that not just on the analyzer side, but also on the sample handling system side, there's innovations and the developments uh, for um, better solution always, always continue. Okay, so guys, let me uh, let me go give back to you. Um, okay, so let us jump back to our presentation and uh, sure, quickly go into. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, there we go. yeah, so this is our um, the second aspect of, of today when, when it comes to how we are. Can you hear me? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 can, we can hear you. We can hear ah, you. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, this is the second, second aspect of, of today with the context of uh, system solutions that not only the hardware, but also the services behind it that's also quite important. Um, so with, within SIG, we are always also quite active and, and developing new ways to cater to, to the service needs in the, in the market. And currently with the COVID pandemic um, change that has affected all our lives and also uh, our professional lives, um, which means that the industry itself will has, as you might already know, has new needs to, to cater to. So for example, remote maintenance or report, remote support. And, and within SIG, even though, as, you, as, you, as, as everyone already knows, that the technology exists quite a while ago, it's only since the pandemic that the need for, for remote maintenance and remote support and as much as possible to, to, to solve, the troubleshoot the problems that happen at site, um, the aspect of um, lifetime services and additional services uh, are, are in focus. And, and SIG has been pioneering that aspect of it as well. Um, I think there's a mini hand, hands-on session, as I would call it, um, where we could probably jump into such a um, um, interface, what we call as a SIG monitoring box. 
and we have the possibility to when the customer allows and when this is uh, part of the um, scope we, we have the possibility to connect to every six sensor in the in the uh, system architecture in, in in the in the in the boundary within the customer's um, uh, location and we are able to connect to every analyzer every other sensor that is connected to the network so for example we i can access a mcs 200 analyzer that's sitting in houston at, at a six wow. facility, for example and this is for emission monitoring so okay so, uh, all sensors used for emission monitoring process control tunnel sensors flow measurement devices everything can be connected to what we call the tdce the telematic data collector and this is giving us a gateway solution in order to have access not only on the measurement value themselves, but also on what we call the so-called vital sensor data. So we can have access to all the data, which you will see later on, and which gives us the possibility to initiate preventive maintenance tasks, for example. Right, exactly. Ah. And, and, and the, the, the key aspect here is that we are able to monitor the health of the sensors in, in that location. So, for example, if, if, if I can just jump into one such um, equipment. So, this is the MCS 200 analyzer. And this, this is just proof of concept to show um, how the, 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 the dashboard looks like. Um, probably I should go to the Russian one. I'll come back here just a moment. Uh, that is the Russian one. Is it Russia? Trying to because, it. because I think uh, predictive maintenance uh, is, 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 is one of the, the, the key aspects for the future, right? I mean, when we had, uh, only if I remember the last webinar with, with the guys from KNF, the gas sampling pumps, right? This is also, I mean, this is the topic which touches all of our industries. And um, I, I'm, I'm very excited uh, to see this because, I mean, especially the sample handling system, which can be responsible for, yeah, a lot of uh, problems during the operations, um has somehow to be monitored right Definitely. exactly Definitely. so it's all about mm -hmm. condition monitoring checking the vital status of the sensor and seeing like here is everything in the green zone so you can um set limit values when is the perfect operating state when there might be some issues but still uh, the operational functionality and when there is the red zone where the uh, system might fail in the next couple of hours, for example, and when really uh, measures need to be taken into consideration. And by monitoring those trends, we are able to actually see when the next error might occur. And by doing so, we can initiate preventive maintenance tasks, for example, exchanging filters before they actually get blocked and stuff like this. And yeah or changing light sources before they are completely um, uh, broken. Right, exactly. So for example, when we are monitoring the power consumption of the analyzer, over time, we will be able to predict when there might be a need for changing the light source in the future. And this means uh, that oh, okay. with this yeah. interface, we are able to also minimize the time needed to order the spare part and also arrange for any service technician that needs to be on site. So this is a more uh, smarter way to predict an error that can happen in the future and already plan in advance to cater to that future need. And as all SIG analyzers are connected to the same systems, uh, if a gas analyzer is telling the operator, I need a maintenance, uh, please order a, a particular spare part, the other analyzers which are within this network can also say, okay, if you are here or if the SIG engineers are coming on site anyway, please do the quarterly maintenance on the following analyzers as well. So we can save some time, we can save money and be more efficient and increase the overall system uptime of all the systems within this network. So yeah, and I think, uh, Felix, that's an important uh, topic because, I mean, depending on the country and depending on the region, depending on the local legal requirements, um, I, I just know that, for example, in Europe, there is a predefined time for the SEMS measuring, uh, how often or the, the times it has to be available, right? So, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's, it's, uh, it, it gives also an additional kind of safety, for, even for the operator of the plant, 
um, uh, to make sure that that uh, all which all things which can be predictive um that uh, yeah that that they are shared there so you call this the the vital data of of the system that's exactly we, we, okay. we distinguish between the measurement data these are the usual values like uh, the gas concentrations which are actually needed in order to, uh, to put a report together but there are also the what we call the vital sensor data those are the temperatures flow um uh, amperage voltage power consumption these are this is data which has been generated already before, but was not used in a proper way. And using now these new technologies, we are able to connect the different dots to also maybe uh, see independencies of different measurement values, which have not been used up to date and okay. may uh, create an additional benefit for the customer and also us. Exactly. And, and, and the fact that we are doing the system integration of the complete solution, we are able to understand the cause and effect uh, within the complete solution, right, from the sampling point until the data reporting. Uh, we are able to understand when a error happens, what would be the possible causes. So which means that if there is a, if there is a, a reduction of pressure in, in a cooling circuit, we will be able to provide certain prompts mm. in the, that says, hey, maybe you want to check the pressure in the cooling circuit. Um, maybe there is a leakage or there is a, a, a pressure drop or there is a blockage somewhere. This already preemptively um, helps both the customer and also our service technicians to troubleshoot from a remote location. Mostly 60% of, of the errors that happen in a, in, a, in a system can be predicted and sorted via sitting maybe somewhere when a service technician, for example, sitting in Russia and, and or, or, sorry, when an analyzer is in Russia, for instance, right now we are able to sit in Germany and predict and monitor and support the customer. And, and for example, there is also uh, this. This is how the system looks like when it is working. Mm -hmm. So we, we have another test system where you can we can show you how the system looks like when there is an error, so that you have an idea of how the dashboard is changing, um, how we can cater um, or change the, the the visual interface for the customer to to know the historical data uh, right from the last month, last year, or we can even custom um, specify the dates. But it needs to be so this there is a whole range of possibilities that are highly relevant in these times to to better support the customer and okay. you see here okay. that is a browser-based dashboard so you can access it of course via desktop pc via laptop but also with your mobile phone so you uh, no matter where you are in the world you have now access to the measurement values and the vital sensor data of your analyzer system yeah yeah okay Wow. Yeah, I think that's that's impressive. I mean, that that, that is answering uh, the the task I gave you. I mean, it's not a real task, but I, I asked you for to give us an outlook. What is the what is what is the future development and where is the future happening? And I think it's interesting to see how these uh, yeah uh, information technologies, the IoT services flow um, and are combined even even in our industry um, or especially in our industry maybe uh, so to say okay so um, um let me have a yeah, look it, because it's it, only two it, minutes left one Sorry, uh, first one point if you want to have some additional information regarding condition monitoring and um, in the uh, world cement magazine uh, issue of november this year Tripatan and myself we uh, wrote an article about condition monitoring in the cement industry so you're well welcome to check this out and uh, yeah. Or maybe we can share this. Maybe we can share the link in in the event uh, yes, notes absolutely, absolutely. Uh, afterwards. I think that that would be that would be interesting um, to see it. So uh, so I have a question here from someone from Andre Holliger. He said, uh, "Can you read the question, guys?" Well, we're gonna stop sharing and there we go. Uh, these uh, dates. And the Are dashboard open for, uh, the customer. for the customer. Do you want to take the phone? Um, uh, currently, what, what we just showed is, of course, uh, used uh, for marketing purposes for sick uh, salespeople and uh, uh, service engineers. However, um, if you would like to have a, a, a demo access, you can always get in touch with us and we will make this available for you. So you can familiarize yourself with this dashboard and also show this dashboard to uh, your colleagues, customers, and friends. So please get in touch with us. We can set up a demo dashboard for you. 
Th thanks, uh, Felix, because there's another question uh, coming. The says, can you open the HW system panel? So oh. I, um, I mean, I can, I can just say um, you guys are available. Um, and uh, I think if there's any special requests, uh, I think it was impressive to see the capabilities you have there. And if, if there are people um, yeah, interested, I think they can get in touch with you. And there's, it's, uh, I think it's a possibility to have a one-on-one -on -one session or something, right? Absolutely. We, we, we are available. And, and also the fact that this is a recorded session, we can also uh, read my yeah. and also have a look at the panel as well. But we are okay. happy to answer any, any any further questions or any 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 questions related to the uh, presentation today. Yeah, I think that that's great because there's another question coming in. Good afternoon. Could you show the panel electrics parts of the analyzer? Um, like I said, we make sure that um, at the end we will have uh, the the event chat and the guys will be available and answer all these questions. And there's um, already a lot of information available on our website. If you check out the product information, then you will also also see a detailed explanation of the uh, how the analyzer shelter looks uh, inside. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, it's already one past nine o'clock. Like I said in the beginning, we prepared these five questions I wanted to ask you about, but many of them you already answered. So, um, guys, uh, Jensen, if you go back one slide, um, let, let me again offer a very special uh, thing here. Um, we, we saw and I think SIG confirmed the importance, the relevancy of the conditioning and sample handling system, always in combination, obviously, with the analyzer, so uh, uh, system a solution. Um, but at the same time, uh, we know that many problems can be caused by the sample handling. So um, we uh, posted the Kennedy link here. Um, I think that's a very good uh, um, yeah, offer we can make that you can book your session with Jemson. And if there's any doubt problems in the sample handling, obviously he is available. And um, at the same time, um, uh, obviously the colleagues from SIG are available. If any question to system solutions, um, uh, yeah, SIG, as we saw, is present worldwide. So I think. Uh, you should make uh, your way to, to them. Okay, everyone, thank you so much um, for for having this this great and very impressive and interesting session. I'm pretty sure about every yeah single aspect we could <laughs> spend an hour, but um, I think it, it was really a great overview, and um, I, I want to thank you for for the effort you invested in this in this preparation. Uh, yeah. For me, I can just say it was, uh, yeah, great fun, and um, uh, thank you for this, right? Thank you, Jörg, and also thank you for the cooperation and for realizing such nice systems with SIG analyzers and HET coolers. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. So thanks, thanks take, take care. And have a good day ahead. Bye. Yeah. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.